Okay, we've had a really, really productive conversation so far. I think we've heard from two fabulous speakers. Um, I know as families, we're all worried and stressed and wondering what we can do to help our own children, to help our own loved ones that have developmental disabilities, that have needs when it comes to um, mental health in addition to um, the disability. Here with us, I am proud to announce we have, and Vijay, please uh, forgive me if I mispronounce your name, but you're welcome to say it right after me, uh, Vijay Ravindran, um, who is the CEO of Florio Tech. Florio Tech is a software company. Um, I'll let Vijay tell you more, more about it, but it is um, a partnership that is going to flourish between um, Florio Tech and the Utah Parent Center so that we can help support families in their own preparation with their loved ones to encounter law enforcement. Um, Vijay, if you will take it away, we're happy to listen. Yeah, great. No, thank you, Esperanza. Um, can you hear me okay? Great. So my name is Vijay Ravindran. Hello from Washington, D.C. Um, where it's getting late here, but I'm really excited to uh, share the, the ideas around the partnership and how we're going to hopefully use the Florio software to help uh, families in Utah during this uh, really difficult situation and, and trying to figure out the right ways to respond. Um, as Esperanza mentioned, I'm the founder and CEO of Florio, uh, a technology startup based in Washington, D.C. and I'm also the parent of a, of a child on the spectrum, so I'm the father of a 10-year-old um, who was the inspiration for the company that I started. Um, I'm going to share a few slides about what the product is um, and then uh, show you some of the trainings that we've built around law enforcement encounters to help families work with their children on announcing themselves with, with composure and being able to navigate some of the challenges that happen in, a, in an encounter. Um, but first, as, as Esperanza mentioned, we uh, you know, saw what was happening in Utah and reached out through Jeff Skibitsky, um, who's the chairman uh, of the board. And, uh, and what we're going to be offering through our partnership is uh, complimentary access to Florio so that you can work with your, with your children to help them, given all of the concerns happening right now. So we wanted to figure out a constructive way to help. Let me share share screen and uh, I'm going to show you a couple of slides and then show you a quick little demonstration of how Florio works. I don't know how many of you have used virtual reality, but uh, virtual reality uh, starts with a, uh, a headset and a smartphone in our system. So an iPhone 7 or above and a headset. Our plan when working with UPC is to also work on getting a set of loaner equipment so that families could pro possibly check it out either at events or through, through some sort of program. But uh, we create clinically designed content in virtual reality to help with training social and behavioral situations. So um, our catalog, uh, I'll get into in a moment. Um, we then pair that experience with an iPad where from the iPad, a supervising adult like a parent is able to essentially provide live coaching as they go through the scenes that we're trying to help them develop skills for. We essentially create a virtual reality practice environment taking real world situations. We also enable this system to work over telehealth or distance learning. So the iPad itself does not have to be in the same room or Wi-Fi network uh, as the child. And as such, we're working with some school districts today who given all the challenges with COVID where special education is essentially shut down, um, we have school districts that are mailing virtual reality headsets to families, which enables their specialists to work with those children over distance learning. Our lesson catalog, which has over 175 lessons, span building block skills like eye contact and the ability to imitate other kids, to life skills like peer-to-peer -peer communication, how to cross the street safely, um, and then, of course, what we're going to be talking about today uh, are law enforcement encounter lessons. We also have content to help kids with uh, distraction therapy, relaxation, mindfulness, calming, using virtual reality environments to provide a, an, a place where they can practice those skills. And we have new content coming out at the end of the year on ADHD, which we're working closely with NIH on developing. We also partner with Sprint to enable hardware to be available to, for leasing. 
So we offer leasing options so that families can potentially bring equipment into the house if they don't have an iPhone in the house and an iPad. Our lesson catalog spans a wide range of content. Some of them are difficult topics like our police encounter content, which I'll share some of the research we've done with Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. We have a COVID-19 uh, module that includes why to wear a mask. Um, we're looking into dating and relationships as one of our next topics. Um, one of our most popular topics amongst those school customers has been on how to teach about bullying and being able to recognize verbal and physical intimidation and get the right amount of help. And as I mentioned, our system today can be used as a distance learning tool as well. So it can be used by a clinic or a school system to provide remote-based intervention. Um, we're also Medicaid approved in Maryland in the District of Columbia as a reimbursed system. So we offer both a, a direct service and an ability for Medicaid approved providers. And we're in similar talks right now with the state of Utah's Medicaid. So we're hoping to at some point uh, soon have a, a version of this. But again, we're working with UPC to potentially offer uh, or plan to offer a complimentary version. Lastly, just before I show you how this works, um, the system has been extensively researched. So we were the recipients four years ago of a multi-year NIH grant with Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. We've been through one of the most extensive studies on at the intersection of virtual reality and autism, with over 150 participants, including a randomized controlled trial that was uh, deemed effective and presented at INSAR 2020, the International Autism Conference. Um, we've been studied in school systems and we're working directly with NIH uh, on a set of ADHD treatments that will complement our autism treatments given the high degree of comorbidity. But uh, let me uh, pause that and show you how Florio works. Um, let's center this a second. All right, is that displaying okay? Hopefully. So what you're looking at right now is an iPad view of the Florio system. If you can see my little window, I have an iPhone in my hand. And these iPhones, uh, like I said, iPhone 7 or above, are capable of going into virtual reality mode. Once they go into virtual reality mode, you simply place these phones on these headsets that hold the phone. And then the person who's essentially receiving the virtual reality training puts the headset on and starts to experience the virtual reality environment. Um, we're going to see everything from the perspective of the adult that's actually working with the person who's receiving the training um, through the iPad. And so, like I said, we have a number of trainings, and we're going to just start with a very simple one, where we start in a street corner. So in this lesson, if you're looking at the little window, you can see my phone has gone into a left eye, right eye view. So it's actually ready now to go into one of these headsets and be dropped in. But what you're seeing in the main window on the iPad is that we're in a street corner environment where we can see what the person in virtual reality is seeing. Their field of view is between the green bars. And we, as the adult working with them, are getting these prompts to help them. So hopefully we've found the officer and we can start the, the lesson. Hey there. And essentially, our lessons are a series of practice scenarios where we can work on the type of dialogue necessary to navigate these situations. We can also then also help provide additional insights on where your hands are, other types of actions and behaviors that you want to practice. So in this case, the officer said, hey there, what should the person in response say? Maybe hi. As the adult, you can advance the lesson once you're satisfied with the answer. So I'll press the green button. Can I talk to you a sec? And we, we worked with the local police department here outside of Washington, D.C. in Montgomery County, Maryland. And so we intentionally use colloquialisms that would be common in a police encounter. Um, and so can I talk to you a sec? Could be a challenging uh, uh, line of dialogue to respond to, but we hopefully will say, sure, and we can keep going. What are you up to here? And then you can imagine a question like this can be hard for someone on the spectrum to answer completely, uh, especially in the specific ways that law enforcement sometimes will want that answer to be. 
Um, in fact, in our research, you know, many neurotypical kids will struggle with uh, complete answers in these situations. They'll say something like, I'm just sitting here on the bench. Um, and of course, as we know, in many cases, that's not gonna be good enough for the law enforcement officer in that situation. We can reprompt the person that's receiving the virtual reality training through the orange buttons. So let's say they said that simple answer, like I'm just sitting here. I need more information. And now we can work on what a more fulsome answer would be in that moment and how to essentially navigate uh, that. Now, one of the things that's not captured as well because you're seeing this through the iPad is that the officer can be seen as intimidating for some kids. Um, it, it does fill up most of the view when you have the headset on. Um, these lessons are fairly straightforward in less level one. And so the officers are as polite as can be um, in the situation and that then ramps up later. Let's say we now actually gave a more complete answer. We can press the green button. So what's your name? And then many of these lessons also have questions in the area of being able, if the child was still lope, needed help from an authority figure, um, practicing name, address, phone number, date of birth, other key identifying information, which um, I know in the case of my son, I thought he knew these things. And then when I went to the trainings, actually he didn't know them um, or he knew them when answering it from me, but not from a police officer in the scene. And so this is an opportunity to practice key identifying information that could be useful if they need help. And where do you live? And so again, we can practice the address. Okay then, thank you for your cooperation. You're free to go. In these early lessons, uh, everyone's free to go at the end. Um, one of the other things that we do in these lessons is we can change the environment to create different scenes that might uh, challenge the child in different ways. So that's actually, hey there. Can I talk to you a sec? What are you up to here? Actually, this one looks pretty similar. You've changed around. So, what's your name? And where do you live? Okay, then. Thank you for your cooperation. You're free to go. So, uh, later scenes include nighttime. They include background distractions like uh, car traffic moving behind there, honking horns, things that might trip up our kids when uh, they're dealing with these situations. So we try to create a simple environment where they can ramp up to developing the composure and understand some of the types of questions that would be asked. I'm gonna show a more involved lesson. Is it not here? So these are the lessons that we worked with Children's Hospital of Philadelphia for a randomized control trial. And these would be also part of what we'd be sharing through the partnership with UPC. And so you'll notice there's some background audio now of some street traffic. So we know that that can sometimes lead to distraction. You see some moving pedestrians, some honking. After we've done describing our surroundings, we're gonna wait. The officers are gonna arrive from uh, you know, an unknown direction. In this case, it's coming straight towards us. And then again, we're going to go through a dialogue. Um, you know, imagine we're practicing this. Sure. Can you tell me what's in your bag? And then we go through some common scenarios. And this one, we're working on the idea that you might have a, ba a backpack with you. Here's uh, where we might want to show it, how to open it up. Can you tell me your full name? Again, identifying questions asked a little differently. Do you go to school around here? And then some of the small talk that an officer might start if, if you're having an encounter. These lessons we work with the Philadelphia Police Department on the uh, dialogue form. All right, your information checks out. 
Now, I'll show you this one one more time, and then. Uh, but uh, here, uh, we're going to go through it. We're going to raise the difficulty. We're going to be an adult. And uh, the minor adult question is also something that um, we know that uh, based on your race, your gender, um, your size, that you can get very different treatment from police officers. And so the minor adult question is also a way to increase potentially and potentially simulate what uh, someone who might get that harsher interaction would get on the street. Um, so this was something that was requested by some of our customers that uh, had, had concerns that uh, they had children that would get uh, more difficult treatment. Hey, are you okay? So we're gonna go through dialogue that starts similar. Let me see your hands. And we can also practice adversity. So let's say we had a poor response these characters actually will become agitated, like in real life. Keep your hands where I can see them. And, uh, and, and, you know, interestingly, when we work in our first set of research, when we worked with individuals on the spectrum, one of the biggest pieces of feedback we got was that they wanted to understand the consequences in more detail. And so we're going to actually... Put your hands where I can see them. We're actually going to show you how, if someone particularly does poorly in, in one of these harder lessons, So in this particular case, we're now back in the back of the officer's car. We're going to the station. And while we don't want this encounter to happen to any of our kids, we can prepare them for what this might mean um, if this were to happen. And so, you know, hopefully none of us are in that situation, but uh, these characters in the scenes actually respond to uh, incorrect answers as well, raise their tone, um, get tougher, and at the end uh, have the consequence painted. Um, there's, there's over 30 total lessons in the system around law enforcement encounters. Um, and, uh, and it's been, you know, something that for our school system customers and clinics working, especially with older kids with some levels of independence, um, have found very useful in being able to see how they respond and be able to practice with them. I'm going to stop here, uh, sharing my screen. Vijay, as a fellow parent um, that has a youth that definitely needs this kind of practice and exposure, I can tell you, it gives me at least some peace of mind to know that there's some proactive way we can tackle some of the challenges um, we all experience. So I can't thank you enough for okay. opening up those possibilities for us and our uh, family in Utah. Uh, thank you. I mean, I, like I said, my son is 10. He's right at that age now where I'm quite concerned about when incidents like what happened in Salt Lake uh, happened and you know the inspiration for what we built started with uh, this terrible incident in Florida in 2016 um, where there was also uh, an encounter that involved a, a shooting and so um, this is a real concern especially uh, uh, when when there's uh, so many ways that uh, the, the actions of our children are misinterpreted you know, we love working with school districts and with clinic businesses. So if, uh, if there are great contacts there that we can get going with, those could be other conduits so that we can reach more families and, uh, and get this type of training as well as our other, other capabilities into those kids' hands. So thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to share what we've been doing.